Aloha, this is Sean with Homestead in Hawaii. It's uh, early morning here um, outside my homestead, going for a little walk on the road. And I thought I'd chat a little bit with you about um, some of the subdivisions out here in Puna. Um, I thought I'd go over five subdivisions um, and sort of their pros and cons and, and give you a little bit of the lay of the land, uh, showing you the roads and the houses and and we'll discuss a little bit about um, what makes them good, what makes them bad. Um, just the overall outlook in Puna, if you are thinking of moving out here, there is a series of subdivisions built over the 50s on sort of the poor land around here where it's um, got fairly recent lava flows, uh, very little soil, mostly rock in a lot of these subdivisions. And they're just um, laid out in the cheapest manner they could. Long, long blocks. Like my road here is at least a mile long before it goes to another cross street. So it kind of doesn't make for much of a neighborhood feel because of that. Really long roads. And sometimes a lot of these subdivisions, people will have dogs that um, are not the nicest dogs to say the least. Um, They'll have roosters that will drive you crazy. We live in lava zone and um, that could be an issue. We just had one subdivision lose half its property in a recent lava flow. I'm not even discussing my favorite subdivision because it doesn't even exist anymore. Um, crime is a possibility. Lots of car thefts, lots of drugs. That happens in a lot of places in America now, it seems, and it doesn't escape Hawaii. But uh, overall, Puna is a pretty cool place to live. Uh, very nice people and great for going off-grid. There's a huge off-grid community out here. It's pretty much how we live. Like, everyone has water catchment. A lot of people have solar power. A lot of people are growing food. Can there be more? Yes, definitely. But it's a more, a lot more than most places in America. Now, before we dive into it, if you are thinking about moving out here from the mainland or somewhere else, it would be good for you to dive into the history of Hawaii, educate yourself on overthrow of the Hawaiian Islands, and to learn about um, those issues as uh, something that um, you know is very dear to the people of Hawaii. They feel. A sense of loss um, and theft from what happened and rightly so when you do come out here do come out with um, aloha in your heart and uh, a respect for the people and and find a way to give back as opposed to take before we dive into the five subdivisions that are good for going off grid here in Pune it'd be great if you could hit the like button below or subscribe to our YouTube channel and when you're done watching, leave a comment with any questions that you might have. Any of this helps grow what we're trying to do here. So, without further ado, let's head down to HPP. Here we are turning into HPP. You can see it's just a long straight road. It's six miles from the highway down to the coast. It takes about six to seven minutes to drive and you can see the top of the subdivision is more wet and lush and then as you get down to the bottom it begins to dry out the trees get a little bit smaller the skies get a bit clearer and you have cool tropical trade wind breezes blowing off the ocean the closer you get to the coast all right i'm here in uh, hpp hawaiian paradise park and this is a very popular subdivision it's got one acre lots, a lot of people living here. It's one of the largest subdivisions in America. It goes on for miles and miles and miles, miles and miles of one acre lots. I'm on one of the roads right now in HVP. This is a kind of standard road. This one is chip sealed. Uh, some are fully paved and others are still kind of a, a cinder dirt road but they're pretty good um, for most subdivisions. People do have gripes and complaints about the homeowners association and the roads crew and the fees that they charge and the corruption that's involved there. Um, but I don't know, when I see Orchidland or 
Hawaiian acres and the state of some of their roads, the roads here in HPP don't look that bad. And so I think it's just people from the mainland coming out here and complaining and not being necessarily used to what it's like to live here, where sometimes you just got shitty roads. Um, something about HVP, lots of people have rooster farms, there's some cockfighting that goes on out here. There's car farms, we call them, where people are, um, have lots of junk cars in their yard. Uh, sometimes there's noise, there's some crime, there's things that go on that, uh, there may be wild dogs. Um, there's things that go on here that um, you may not like. It's all road by road, street by street. Make sure if you're looking for a place that you check out each road, check out your neighbors, check it out at nighttime. You can tell which neighbor is going to be a cool neighbor and which one might give you trouble just by looking. So overall for me, if I could live in uh, lower HPP down by the ocean, that would be where I'd want to be. It's um, less traffic down there, a little more sun, a little less soil, a little less easy to grow food and whatnot, but you still get a lot of rainfall in comparison to other places in the world. And uh, you could still grow some great food down there in the lower parts. Um, I prefer it because it's a little less populated. You could ride your bike to the ocean if you're close enough. Uh, nice walking trails down there. There's some tide pools to swim in. I see unpermitted homes. I see roosters. Uh, those two things right there kind of tell you that HPP is okay for going off grid. What I like about HPP is that there's certain spots along the coast down here where there's some hiking trails which are pretty hard to find in Pune. Um, if you just want to get out, get on the trail, it's pretty easy to do if you're in lower HPP. The roads are a little more quiet down here. You can ride your bike down and you can have a nice peaceful trail where there's really no one else here. It's easy to hop down to the cliffs. You can see the sea arch or just enjoy the view, go fishing. It's uh, just kind of a nice thing that most of the other subdivisions don't offer around here. It's just a place to get outside and walk and, and be in a, a little natural area. So that's uh, another benefit to HPP, besides its uh, affordability and uh, proximity to Hilo and everything, uh, is uh, some cool hiking trails. There's this one. Um, getting down just to the cliffs and there's another trail that goes to a nice white sandy beach if you're into being outside a little bike ride in seeing people walking on the roads having access to trails then lower HPP might be a spot for you all right now I'm in orchid land this is a subdivision that's a little more Malka than HPP but right across the highway Malka means up more towards the mountain and so it's a little higher in elevation, a little cooler, a little wetter. And so you could grow different things here. There are a lot of homesteaders located in Orchid Land and it um, seems to be a good place to be. Uh, some of the lots are about um, two acres, some are three acres. They do have some that are one acre when you're closer to the highway. But I think most of them are about two acres. Um, thing with Orchid Land though is it's off grid. You know, they do have power lines. But um, most of people, it's easy to be off grid on water catchment. The roads could be a little bit out of shape. Some roads are really bumpy, really slow. Some are um, fast. You fear to find yourself on one of the main concrete roads. Some are decent. This is a, a dirt road, not as bad as some of the other ones. Some you're like really like got some big mounds and undulations, puddles and heavy storms and whatnot, but this one is pretty straight. Um, what I know though is if I'm already living a good 20 minutes outside of town, I don't need to add another 20 minutes just trying to get off my dirt road in my subdivision. So for me, when I'm looking for a place, I like to find a place where I can uh, get out quick. Um, that may be for you. It may be you like to stay on your homestead and not leave very much and stay kind of secluded like that and having a dirt road that's kind of crappy will keep you there and it'll also keep other people away so your area could be really quiet but i don't find that to be very conducive for families 
Um, so if you're homesteading with a family, I prefer HPP where the roads are better. Sometimes you just want to get out or ride a bike with them on your road or, or do something different besides just being stuck on your property, which can t really be something that you feel very often out here is that you can feel really stuck even though we're there's nature all around us there isn't necessarily a cool place to get out and walk around you might have a lot of homes nearby where they have wild dogs that just that they're not tied up and they're just ready to bite you it happens out here it's common um, so something to consider if you do have young families if you're into homeschooling and just you know being off-grid, then Orchid Land is a pretty sweet spot. Um, relatively low-cost lots for a lot of land, and you are still close to many things, especially if you are not find yourself not on one of the horrible dirt roads. So Orchid Land, great choice for off-grid living if you're looking out here. It's in Upper Puna, a little closer to Hilo, uh, about 10 miles to Hilo. Like anything, anywhere, there are pros and cons. Just be sure to research. Go down each street, street by street. Make sure you see your neighbors and make sure if you're actually deciding to purchase a property that it's the one you're gonna want. guys now I'm in uh, Hawaiian Acres I'm on one of the well-known dirt roads out here um, you can see they've done some work little gravel in spots but man this road is pretty junk it's gonna take a long time I gotta get to road 3 to pick up my kids and I just came from road 8 and I've already been driving for five minutes I haven't even got to road 7 yet so it just takes a while to get in and out of Hawaiian Acres but once you're in here you have large three acre lots they're called they're spaghetti lots they're real narrow but very long but you can see that you're in a forest here so when you're developing your properties there's going to be a lot of clearing involved um, if you want to have the full three acres but i suggest keeping some of the native ohia trees because these trees are um, very valued in the hawaiian culture and for the hawaiian ecosystem so please keep some of your ohia trees if you do clear so you could get away with quite a lot in Hawaiian Acres because the roads are so bad. Lots of homes out here tend to be unpermitted um, and the county just looks the other way. I don't know, they, want, they don't want to drive back here as much as anyone else does really. Um, so if you're looking to go off grid and build something unpermitted where you don't have to fo follow the, the laws and get the expensive permits and everything, you could uh, definitely hide it away back here in Hawaiian Acres. Um, Hawaiian Acres has a pretty cool homeowners association or a community center um, where they try and have a weekly farmers market, a yoga, and some other events now and then. They have Wi Fi there. Uh, it's hard to get Wi Fi out at your place here because it's so remote, but they do have communal Wi Fi at the community center. And, um, you know, you can find good people down there. I've met a lot of cool folks in Hawaiian Acres and, um, so when you hear about the downside of Hawaiian Acres, there's also a pretty good plus side. Uh, really solid people live back in here. Here I am on one of the side spurs here in Hawaiian Acres. It's, you can see it's much narrower. It's a dirt road still. Um, it's been pretty dry, so uh, when it's dirt wet, it's uh, pretty full of puddles here. Um, if you're living here, it's a good idea to have four-wheel drive. I've seen people driving around that don't have it, but I bet they wish they did. So if you're considering coming to Hawaiian Acres, and know that the roads are a really big issue. They suck, but you can hear the beautiful bird calls. The sky is beautiful. It gets a little wetter up here. 
but it is pretty peaceful. So you just stop to listen. Okay, I'm in the Leilani subdivision here, and this one has a, an interesting history to say the least. It's a, it's a wonderful subdivision. It's very beautiful, peaceful, quiet, friendly neighbors, people walking around. Um, they kind of have always been a little limiting on certain things for homesteading. They have strict CCNRs. They need you to build um, in a certain way and they won't allow roosters or whatnot here. But you can have a nice garden and whatnot, but you do have to be worried about what's behind me. Well, behind me used to be more homes and a street that went down in the ocean. But now, after 2018, it's a, it's a giant pu'u, or a crater where lava spewed out of the ground and destroyed over 700 homes. And Leilani is in zone one. I've told people that I know constantly to double think about Leilani. I know it's beautiful and I know it's nice here, but you're on top of a crater. And 2018 proved, proved that right. Uh, so places are still available here. You can see that just turning around behind me, it's green and lush and everything is normal back here. And the subdivision is nice and quiet and peaceful. And you're still close to a lot of cool things. Pahoa is not too far. The neighborhood is really quiet. And you can grow some awesome things out here. Um, minus the chickens and whatnot. But um, it's, is it worth it? Living so close to an active crater? I have a lot of friends that can tell you no. So this is Leilani. Very beautiful place. But mm, I don't know about it. All right, now I'm on the lawn here at Seaview in Lower Puna, and uh, this is quite a subdivision. Homes here are pretty well built and eclectic and unique, not kind of the sort of general stock kit home that you'll find in other places around here. But people here really care about their um, how their homes look and how they're constructed. But um, there's lots of homes that are off-grid. They got solar panels. They have water catchment. It's a little dry here, so a little harder to catch all of your water. Um, a little rockier here, so less soil, so a little harder to grow, but you can do it. There are a few places that have some good gardens. There's some farm stands in the community. This is where a lot of like the central um, hub of the sort of counterculture, hippie, um, movement is here on the Big Island down here in this lower Puna, Seaview, Kahena, Kalani area. They all tend to live down here and if you're into that sort of a thing then this would be your home. This is where you'd want to live. Uh, a caveat about Seaview is I ha have heard it to be known to be very uh, drama and conflict filled. The lots are small, neighbors get into each other's business and sometimes not very pretty. So for me, that's enough to not really want to live in a place like this. I don't want drama from neighbors. Um, like I've said earlier, if it's possible to move on to a property that is not in one of these subdivisions would be best. And there are a lot of nice areas just um, beyond this Seaview subdivision that have beautiful homes, beautiful properties that are really lush. Um, but once again, being in Lower Puna, you do have to worry about the lava. It is beautiful here. You're along the coast. Beautiful. Um, there's a there's a beach nearby, Kahena Beach, uh, where there's drum circles on Sundays and lots of naked people on the other days. A beautiful black sand beach. Um, but that's it. There really isn't much else here. There's a lot of coastline, but a lot, a lot of rocky cliff. Good for fishing. But one day, all of this is going to be under lava. We're in lava zone here, and uh, that's a potential problem. And after living through the 2018 flow, uh, I don't, I wouldn't want to invest my time and, and money and years of hard work on a place that might get 
um, buried in thick lava rock one day. I want to have something that I could leave for generations. So I would uh, probably not do Sea View, but it is a place that is an option for those of you who don't mind that or willing to risk the, the time factor that you might be allowed and to live in a community that has a lot of um, events and, and things going on and where there's a cool coastline and, and bike riding along the coast road here or just swimming down at Kahena. It's beautiful here. It's just a, a nice spot to be. If it wasn't for those um, downsides, this could be a cool spot um, for my family to live too. But I chose to go somewhere else. There's absolutely no surf spots in this region. Pohiki just got wiped out. There's a little bit of a wave, but it's pretty much gone. So going towards Hilo is your best bet. And once last thing, Sea View is pretty remote. You're about 20 to 30 minutes away from any sort of commercial activity and then a good hour from Hilo. Um, so if you need to go to the grocery store or get some supplies, uh, it's going to be a trip that's going to take a while. So most likely you're going to want to spend most of your time down here. So if you need to work, you got to think about that as well. I hope all of that really helped give you a layout of what it's like to live here in Pune and what all the subdivisions have to offer. This is just a small handful of the subdivisions that exist out here in Pune. These are the five major subdivisions. There's a few more out there that are a little smaller. Some have um, m more inexpensive lots, some are more expensive. Um, but generally, if you're moving to the Big Island, you're going to hear about the five that I just covered today, and those might be the main ones that are on your list. So I hope that you took everything into account today, and it's going to help guide you. Uh, check out uh, any future videos that we have on our YouTube channel. We have a lot more that will help guide your move off-grid, and I hope that you are able to make it happen for you. We need more people growing food providing food for themselves and for their family and for their neighbors. Uh, the more of us that can get out there and do that, the more resilient we're going to be for any future worldwide pandemics or just a simple hurricane or, or yeah, even just to have healthier food. Aloha, everyone. Until next time, we'll see you later. Ahui ho.